Yachts for Sale and Charter YouTube channel, opening a window into the world of yacht brokerage. And if you watch my vlogs regularly, you'll know that they're quite often done from my office behind the desk because there's a fair amount of office work involved. But today I'm showing you one of the more fun elements of the job as we accompany the 165 foot Mangusta Serenity from Antibes to Monaco. I filmed Serenity when she first became available for sale in Doha. And to be honest, Doha is not the easiest place to sell a yacht from. So the owner relocated her to the Med. She's been in Antibes. And tomorrow we're doing an open day on board in Monaco. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But first of all, the other reason that we're accompanying the yacht is because previously she had exterior cushions, which were kind of a ready orange color. And first impressions are so important whether you're selling a terraced house in Derbyshire or a 165 foot super yacht, you want it to look good right from the beginning. The owner has now changed the cushions. They actually look a lot nicer. So we're taking the opportunity for the yacht being out at the sea to re-photograph and refilm the exterior of the yacht. Now though, we're gonna be dropping anchor very soon and taking some of the drone footage and then moving on to Monaco for the open day. open days are an important part of yacht brokerage, giving us the opportunity to show the yacht, in this case Serenity, to potential clients and also to other brokers. My colleague Ed Dickinson designed some email flyers to send to every broker in the area, irrespective of whether they work for us or for a competing brokerage company. We just want to find a buyer and really don't mind if we share the commission with another company to achieve that goal. A good broker will attend these open days so that they can get a good first-hand knowledge of what is on the market and share that intel with their clients. And Ed really does do an excellent walkthrough of the yachts that he represents. So I thought I'd let him show you around the yacht. Good afternoon. Welcome on board Serenity. She's the 2011 Mangustin 165. Uh, she's the sixth 165 delivered. She's now actively for sale with Northrop and Johnson. In the past 18 months, she's had multiple refits. The most significant was a full exterior repaint, which we'll show you as you go round. She's almost completed a 10 year class survey and uh, she's had an interior refresh as well. So you can head on into the main salon. So the main interior salon is split into three separate sections. We've got the uh, main guest dining area, which is aft with a bar area, which leads down to the crew galley. You've also got a central seating area, which can be converted into a second dining area. Um, often this can be used as a banquet area so that uh, the guests who are sat here dining can lay all their food out here nicely and forward of which we have uh, the owner's card, card table area. All of these areas can be either converted into simple seating areas or they can have larger, larger tabletops put on top. All of the televisions collapse down. In the uh, most recent of refits, they re-varnished all the floors. All of the side cabinets have got storage in them and they've all been protected by a film layer to stop any scratching. The most impressive space-wise area of the boat has to be you know, midship here. And this is where you get the best sense of the volume of the vessel. In the summer, if it's not too warm, you can lock open the aft doors and you can see right through the boat. She's 488 grace tons, almost 50 meters. And the 
the size, you can really sort of get an idea of the space on board. One of the features which is quite unique to the 165 is you can have the crew area completely separated from the guest area. So the glass here can be opaqued out to give guests complete privacy. Same with the skylights. On a hot day, you can either have them shaded out or you can have them clear. So it's evening, you can see up through to the stars. If we come forward, you have the main bridge area with a small ship's office. The yacht is powered by three MTU 4000 series, producing a total of 12,000 horsepower. With this engine package, she's designed to cruise at 32, 33 knots. On sea trials last year, they hit 41, 41 knots underway, which is quite impressive for a 50 meter vessel. Fuel economy is around 600 litres of low cruising. However, if you're pushing her full out, she'll be close to 2,000 litres an hour of fuel. But um, all the engine works have been fully ticked off and up to date and in good shape. One of the things that sets uh, Serenity apart from other Mangusta 165s is her layout. So whereas most of these 165s have five cabins, usually port forward or starboard forward, you'd find an owner's study or a TV lounge. Uh, they've decided to make a cabin configuration with an owner's aft, a twin, a quadruple, a double cabin, and then also a very spacious VIP, which we'll show you afterwards. This is the uh, owner's stateroom and uh, it's equipped with a his and hers bathroom. On the uh, port aft, you'll find there's a very large bath area. And on the starboard aft, you have a hammam shower. You have a huge amount of private storage space. There's also two safes for security. You have large windows which anchor, fill the area with a lot of natural light. This is the first of the twin cabins, which has an ensuite bathroom. This twin cabin also has a Pullman bunk featured, so up to three guests can be slept in here. To port, you'll find there's a further double cabin. Starboard forward is a kid's cabin, which has got a fixed bunk, a Pullman bunk and two lower twins. This also has ensuite facilities. And forward is the VIP cabin. This VIP is set apart from the other 165s, which you usually find the bulkhead is further forward, which means it's smaller. But by moving the bulkhead back, relocating the port middle cabin, we have this uh, very large uh, ensuite bathroom, which features both a hammam shower and uh, a large bath. For many owners, this could be seen as a second, second owner's cabin. We'll go upstairs onto the, uh, the deck space. Aft of the uh, main salon, we come out to the main exterior dining space. We have a small coffee table behind you. Uh, we also have this large varnished aft table with a further two coffee tables. Uh, we have up here is the uh, sun deck. On this particular 165, the owners equipped the upper deck with a gymnasium area. However, it was originally built with a large bench with seating, so this could be refitted. You have an upstairs seating area, which is perfect for lunch at anchor, especially as we have a dumb way to lift here, which comes all the way from the galley through the main deck and up to the sun deck to make sure food can be easily prepared. We also have a sink, fridge, freezer, and ice maker. 
Just up forward here, we have the upper helm controls. So up to 30, 35 knots, it's a nice place for the owner to sit up here while his captain's driving. This uh, bimini cover can also stay up in pretty happily until 30, 35 knots as well. So uh, it doesn't have to come up and down every time you get up to top speed. So one of the times you'll really understand the true size of this vessel is when you walk from the aft deck up forward. During the most recent refit, all of this lighting was changed out. Up forward here on the foredeck, we find a further seating area, which is fully shaded. The electrical bimini can be raised or lowered. There is plumbing set up in this area here as well. So should you want to fit a jacuzzi later on, it's easily done. The final piece of outdoor space on board the vessel is this beautiful secluded and lounging space, which is nicely shaded. And from here again, there's a nice view of the vessel and so you can understand the full size of uh, Serenity. So one of the uh, final areas to show on board the boat is the, uh, the yacht's tender garage. So you have access on both sides when the passerelle's not out to enter. Down here you find the main tender, which is a 6.2 meter Castaldi jet rib. We've also got space for two jet skis, which can be lowered out the crane. All these lights were recently put in, and we also have a deck shower. Forward of here we have direct access through to the engine room, uh, which is where the three MTU 4000 series engines are. Well, that's pretty much the end of the open day for us. So it was quite a risk to bring the yacht to this open day because the original plan of Ed and I was to have different brokerage companies, all with similar sorts of yachts, all holding an open day at the same time so that lots of brokers could look at lots of similar yachts altogether. But one by one, every other brokerage pulled out because they weren't able to get their yachts into the port. And so we were left with just serenity to show and to be honest we were a little bit worried that if there wasn't a good presence the whole thing could be a flop that's one of those risks that you have to take in yacht brokerage sometimes and it really ended up paying off we actually had one of the best attendances we've ever had at any of our open days um, we had an appointment with a potential buyer first thing in the morning he arrived he had a good viewing he came back later on with a member of his family to look at the yacht again we had uh, an individual turn up on the back of the dock who'd heard that the yacht would be here and he's owned yachts similar to this in the past so he had a really thorough look at Serenity with a view to coming back a second time and looking at her. We've got another potential buyer uh, coming a little bit later on this evening with his broker who's literally just gone to see him and bring him to show him this yacht. And we've had lots of other yacht brokers too coming just to familiarize themselves with what is without a doubt the best man at Augusta 165 on the market. So we, we threw the dice, we took the gamble and it's really paid off for us. We're very, very happy. Um, Serenity will be leaving, I think, tomorrow morning. We've got other visits planned on board once she's gone. Um, so really the whole point of this vlog was to show you a little bit about what we do as yacht brokers. We try to find initiatives that will put the yachts we've got for sale in front of the biggest audience possible. Um, sometimes it doesn't go as well as we want. Today it's gone very, very well indeed. So this is the first time that I've produced a vlog quite like this one. And it really is my intention just to open up the world of yacht brokerage to you and show you what we do, the yachts that we represent and how we go about trying to, to sell them basically and to find buyers 
for them. And other projects that I'm really enthusiastic about that I'm producing for the Northrop & Johnson YouTube channel is Super Yacht News. I'm going to put a link to that at the end of this video so that you can see it. And that will be a monthly video coming out on their channel just telling you what's happening in the super yacht industry. We've divided it into news from the company, news from yacht builders, news regarding yachts for sale, and news regarding yachts for charter. So take a look at that. And to get more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.